Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. Alrighty, when we left off, we had been really learning things about our companions, and including the Handmaiden. We know something is going on with her and her family, but there is something we might learn from Kreia, possibly. This is a weird glitch. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Okay. You are spending time with the servant of Atris. <laughs> what was that? That was a weird audio glitch. Um, I did have the game sitting on standby for a little bit while I was eating honestly um so that might have been why but that is different also apparently she knows that i've been spending time with the handmaiden even though you know she never leaves this room but then again i mean the handmaiden is in the cargo hold which is basically like a hop, skip, and a jump away from this room. So maybe she heard. Probably she heard, considering we were fighting with each other. Probably heard. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised you know so much when you never leave this room. <laughs> Basically what I pointed out. Um, I'm surprised you know so much when you never leave this room. I guess I'll go with that, because that's true. I knew her mother. She was a Jedi Knight. Oh. A master named Aaron Kai. Jedi are forbidden to have children. And when the crime finally came to light almost a decade later, Kai was exiled. Oh. She joined the Mandalorian Wars after the shame of her birth was revealed. Aha! Uh -huh. Aaron Kai. And apparently... Also, Jedi are not allowed to have children? I mean, I knew that, you know, romantic attachment was technically forbidden, but that was why the Grey Jedi kind of were a thing. But... I mean, I guess that makes sense. Kind of... It's kind of the difference between the Sith ideology and the Jedi ideology. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, children are a fruit of passion technically. Sometimes. But, yeah. I guess that makes sense. So. Oh, I could go that angle. I don't remember her. Are you sure? Revan welcomed her. And she was said to be a skilled warrior. Beautiful and strong in the Force. The Force mm -hmm. flows strongly in the blood of those born from Force sensitives. I doubt that Aaron was any different. If the servant of Atris is of her blood, then the potential lies within her. If you train oh. her, if you teach her the ways of the Jedi, you will be asking her to break her oath to Atris. It would be best not to train her, and let the bloodline die with Telos. Oh. So, the Sith know that Force sensitivity runs through bloodlines almost as strongly as it can then just come out of thin air, as it were. So, that makes sense. Okay. You said teach her the ways of the Jedi. Curious choice of words. Ah, that was an interesting choice of words indeed. She has sworn not to follow the path of the Jedi by her oath. But even that oath is limited. One does not need to be Jedi to learn the ways of the Force. I suspect it cares little for our codes and philosophies. Mm. There's also an awareness check that I uh, learned of through watching a certain other uh, YouTuber slash Twitch streamer that used to be part of a larger group that starts with a Z. 
um, he had played it recently, and apparently there was also an awareness check in that regard as well. I didn't know wisdom also applies, too. Huh. There's only Jedi and Sith, so what you're proposing seems a greater evil. No. There's the great Jedi. They're not that evil. What, what, why, why the game gotta go after my people, man? <laughs> why the game gotta go after my thing, man? Ah, oh, whatever. But shouldn't she know her heritage? Should she? By whose judgment should such truths be revealed? I do not have such arrogant presumptions. Hmm. The Jedi separate children from their parents as they did you. It is because family exerts a powerful influence on one's development. True. I am merely saying that revealing such things can have profound consequences, nothing more. I see. So revealing the truth that she may be force sensitive, and in fact probably is, given the fact that she is the daughter of a Jedi, would change a lot of calculus in her mind. Hmm. So we could make her an oath breaker or technically honor the oath to the letter. Especially if we were going dark side, which we're not going to do in this playthrough. And technically honor it. Hmm. How could I train her? You must train yourself first. The time will reveal itself. Yet if you persist as you have building her trust, then you will be training her, whether you know it or not, until the choice is hers, not yours. Mm. So if I continue building her trust the way I am with our little sparring sessions, she will make the decision. I see. Okay. I'll be going now. Before you go, a word of caution. Okay. Spend time with her if you must, but recognize where your true loyalties lie to the galaxy and yourself. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> I see. These answers make it seem like uh <laughs> make it seem like there's a romantic angle here. Uh, which, I mean, I did basically see her in her <laughs> Spanx, but that's not the point. Um, hmm. Where do I want to go with this? I guess I'll go with this. I don't need a lecture from you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, will definitely push Kreia away, and I want to see how much of the influence actually helps in changing the story. So, my loyalties lie to my friends and allies. Ah, so it is loyalty you claim when you squander away your time with her. Never have you wondered what it would mean in the Ichani rituals if the two of you sparred and fought. And you won, completely and utterly. If perhaps she would give in, surrender herself to you. Um. You are the thoughts that can hide in the shadows of your mind. Exile. And such passions are not strength, but erosion. Girl. Kreia, I did not add you to my party to put evil notions in my head. There are enough in there that don't need company. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um, I can deny it. Uh, I can basically soon it up. <laughs> soon there. It up a little bit. Or I can just go like, 
Maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. We'll see how it goes in the future. Future. Yeah, I said future. Trying out new pronunciations of words like a fucking crazy person. Alright, anyway, I'm, I'm late enough in the episode. I can swear. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> perhaps, and perhaps not. We shall see. I cannot help but hear you at times. And such curious thoughts they are, not at all like a Jedi. But I shall keep such thoughts to myself, I think. I appreciate and that. As well. Okay, well, I didn't lose any influence, but I didn't gain any either. But I did learn a few things that I might as well... Oh, I, I thought it was... My mental map of the ship is a little fucky-wucky, I guess. Because I thought it was a shorter distance but not the point yes uh, can I ask you some questions you may ask I wanted to talk to you about your mother what of her as I said I knew little about her I guess I can spill the beans It'd be interesting Oh, that... I just finished that line. Oh, my gods. Ha, ha. Whoa, that's dark sidey. Oh, boy. All right. She was a Jedi. Her name was Eren Kai. This is already known to me. Why are you telling me this? Hmm. <laughs> There's the dark side answer there. <laughs> a stronger, darker path. <laughs> okay. Um, because the Force runs strong in bloodlines, and you could learn to use it to help others. I do not know enough of you yet to speak of such things. Okay. I do not know your stance, your heart. Fair Perhaps enough. Perhaps if we were to train together in battle, my thoughts on this would be clearer. But not now. Okay. Fair enough. I'll be going. I didn't lose anything. Oh, thank you, merciful Jesus. I was worried that that was going to happen. Okay, T3. Let's look at you real quick. Uh, I don't think I'll get any further in repair. Uh, programming spike. Can you make me more? Ah, uh, can you make any more? Cool. Make any more? Cool. Make any more? <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this way until I'm told no. I guess I'll get a lot more. Okay, that's a no. Okay, maybe later then. Uh, I'll be going. <laughs> it gives me a whole list of the ones I got. That's eight. I got eight computer spikes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's good. Now I have eight computer spikes additionally on top of everything else. Okay, well. Uh, so, we got Baudur in here. Let's check on him, maybe? I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? Oh, now you want to talk about it? Just drop it, then. It's not important. What is it? Why did you decide to fight? Ah. Uh -huh. So we're, it's more roleplay bits. Okay, getting into the character. Basically, immersing yourself in what your character would be doing. Okay, which is what I've learned and figured out that this is what this is supposed to be doing. Um, it didn't strike me at first, but now it makes a lot more sense. Okay. Um, eager to join, that seems dark sidey. that seems like I'm bowing to the fact that I made a mistake. I'm not playing that. Uh, the Jedi served no one with an action. The war went poorly before Revan and the Jedi lent aid to the Republic. Many of us believed the Jedi to be cowards who were afraid to face the Mandalorian threat. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. Mm -hmm. Unlike many of the Jedi, I could not stand by and watch. I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. 
I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy they gave the people they conquered. Oh. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? Oh, that's a way. That's a way to take it. I wonder if that would teach me the pod that way. I wonder. I wonder. Uh, probably not. Uh, it would be nice if it did, though. Um, I'm not sure how to answer this, because that's definitely dark sidey, But that doesn't feel right either. I'm not sure which one I want. Damn it. They're both good, but different directions. Not sure which one I want to go with. Uh, balls. Hmm. I detached myself from the frenzy of battle. It was impersonal. I couldn't do that. It was almost as though the battle took control of me, drove me forward. It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me, turned me into a weapon. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you wanted me for? No, I absolutely understand. Do you have any shields I could use? Sure do, General. I've made a few while I wasn't working on the ship. Here you go. Just remember, the best shield is not getting shot at all. Something else I can help you with? I mean, that's true. I wonder how many more of these I can... Oh, I can go. I can keep going. Okay, I can basically do the same thing I did with T3. Okay, I'm just going to fast forward through all of this. Every little bit. Okay, I guess I'm done there. Whoa, I get melee shields and energy shields from all of that. Oh my god. That's four of each. Okay. Cool. And we learned a little bit about... A little bit about uh, Baudor. Apparently he had a bit of a dark sidey tendency uh, to get lost in the thrill of battle. But uh, technically that's also true of some of the uh, lightsaber forms basically lose yourself into battle um i think that's juyo and vipad a little bit <sighs> yeah i think those are the two i think there's another but i'm not sure if that's right or not i honestly don't know it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while but yeah uh atten I apparently screwed up a little bit with Atten. Uh, I shouldn't have pushed the issue. Even though I had to persuade, I shouldn't have pushed it. You seem pretty calm. It's almost streaming off of you. A oh. lot calmer than you were on Paragus when I first met you. What do you mean? On Paragus, you seemed, well, a little less at peace with yourself. Now you're different. It's hard to explain. I'm fine. In fact, I haven't felt this good in a long time. Well, it's good to see. You're a nice counterbalance to that old witch back there. Okay, cool. I had some questions. All right. What did you want to know? Oh, and it's all just about Pazak. Okay, nah, not, nothing. Never mind. Okay. He, I guess he's going to comment on uh, my progression as a light side uh, Jedi-ish. For pretty much the entire time, I guess. Interesting. Leave the Ibn Hawk. Oh, I, we're in transit. I can't leave. I thought I had landed on another planet already. I guess I didn't. Oops, dude. All right, uh, let's go. Um, where are we going? That's the question. Uh, I'm not going back to Telos. Um, 
<laughs> Paragus is destroyed, can I? Yeah, inaccessible facility to destroy it. Okay, I had to make sure. I had to make sure. It seemed interesting. Ah, uh, Narshida. That's an option, sure. Um, going to Dantooine's also an option. Onderon's an option. And Korriban's an option. So, similar to the original game, Onderon, Dantooine, Korriban, but... I don't remember if we did Narshida in the first game. Did we? Am I losing my mind? I might be losing my mind. No, no, it wasn't. It was Manan, not Narshida. Okay. That's right. Hmm. I kind of want to do Dantooine. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Especially due to the fact that there was an old Jedi temple there. And it would be nice to have a lightsaber again. And I could probably find a lot of parts there. But I guess Nar is probably the good first one we should head to. Well... Here we are, the Smuggler's Moon. It's the gaping maw of Nal Hutta, swallowing all the cargo and spaceport thugs the galaxy has to offer. Mandalorians, huh. mercenaries, war veterans, and pilots from the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War ended up on Nar Shaddaa, from all sides of the conflict. Mm -hmm. When the last war ended, there was no place left for them to go. Nar Shaddaa's a rough place and easy to get lost in, or for someone to get lost. If you wanted to keep out of sight from the Sith for a while, you couldn't pick a better spot. I see. Understandable. And it is a mess from the sound of it, too, if it was from all sides of the war, all coinciding on one planet. Yeah, that would get messy real damn fast, wouldn't it? Hmm. So there's a lot of ex-soldiers on Nar Shaddaa. Yeah. Some came looking for work running freight and cargo. Mm -hmm. Still, there's only so many ships to go around and so many workers. Makes so sense. others lend their weapons to the huts in the exchange. Oh. Become a prime base for raider recruitment across the galaxy. Ooh. Gotcha. So we would have some cleaning up to do if we were going there. I see. So, what? what's Nal Hutta? I know what Nal Hutta is. That's the home planet of the huts. That's where their empire started. It's also probably... Disgusting, considering how the huts are. Um, how hard would it be to find a Jedi there? It won't be easy. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa. Finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in. Or find you once you arrive. You speak of this place as if it is familiar to you. Anyone flying the Star Lanes has docked on Nar Shaddaa at least once. I wouldn't want to live there, and I doubt anyone does by choice. Yeah, there's probably not a lot of them who do it by choice. The ones who do it by choice are probably huts, because it's so close to Nal Hutta. And also, you know, the whole recruiting raiders for your illegal crime activities thing. That probably is why. Good two-thirds of it. Anyway, what's the refugee sector? Not everyone who came to Nar Shaddaa were soldiers. Mm. A lot of worlds were destroyed by the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Mm. Left a lot of people wandering the galaxy. That would do it. How hard will it be to hide there? Shouldn't be too hard. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa, finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. Yep, 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 yep. We've already gone through this. I've already gone through that. I didn't expect that to do it again. Okay, let's take the Ebon Hawk in for a landing. I've plotted a course for the refugee sector, and we should touch down within the hour. Cool. Once we're down, we should finally be able to breathe easy. There's no way anyone's going to find us here. Damn it, Barth. <laughs> God damn it, Barth. He's basically Karth. Karth 2. That's why I'm calling him Barth. <sighs> why did you have to say that? Why did you have to jinx it? Stupid fuck. Damn bastard. Alright.
Welp, it's jinxed now. We're SOL. Fuck me? Hello? Oh, hello. <laughs> hey there. How you doing? How you doing? I should stop. I should stop doing the Joey thing. Well, hello. Perhaps you have heard that the Jedi comes to Nar Shada. While he walks upon the smuggler's moon, he is not to be harmed. You may watch him, observe his movements, but nothing more. Why must we watch? We have hunted them for so long. Now we must wait. Goto's head is filled with madness. Zerg family hunt the galaxy. Look for Jedi. Jedi finally comes here and we can no longer hunt. There is no sense to it. If you wish to live, you should respect Goto's wishes. The handsome Jedi has run for years. He will not stay on this moon forever. Let the Zugs defy Goto. And after I've collected their bounty, I'll keep their heads as trophies. You best leave threats unspoken, Hana. You are carried too far from World of Trees. Maybe too far. I hear you not even collect life debt from little red-maned human female. she make fool of you twice. If she had crossed Zugs, she would be very dead now. Goto or not, I will cover bloody swath through your entire family, Zug. I swear it to you. If Goto's vessel is no longer neutral ground, inform us so that we might initiate assassination protocols and commence firing at once. Oh, calm down. It would be unwise to commit violence here. Goto's order was clear. We are not to harm the handsome Jedi while he walks on Narshida. Unless we are attacked first, we are permitted to defend ourselves. Observation. Jedi follow the self-destructive path. This Jedi is different. Goto told us to leave the Jedi alone, it is true. But he said nothing of the Jedi's companions. Oh. So you're gonna go piss me off by fucking with my people, huh? Ah, the beautiful stench and decay of desperate living. This moon, it teems with life. It is difficult to center oneself. Word of warning, watch where you step. Or you'll fall for hours. Fair enough. Yeah, I bet we would. Um, any problems with the docking authorities? No, but I forgot to tell them we were landing. The refugees. You did what? Dead zone. No one cares too much who flies in and out of here as long as they're not carrying cargo that the exchange or the huts might want a piece of. So me? You figured it was a good idea when some cargo is me? You stupid asshole. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. All right. The Ebon Hawk looks a little exposed. Maybe a little, but landing here means we didn't have to transmit our ID signature. You know what trouble that always brings. Ah. Uh. While we're here, we should get those signatures changed. Wouldn't make us such a target when we enter a new system. That's a brilliant idea. Okay. There. There's that. That works. Cool. Are we going to be okay on this landing pad? Sure. Most of the landing pads around here are unclaimed. Or should be. They're pretty badly maintained, so they're not safe to land on. Well, I mean, not this one. But they all have the reputation, so we should be alright. I think. You do not fill me with confidence in the fucking slightest. I hope you're aware of that. Alright, let's move. Alright then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. Huh. Let's see where our path takes us. Alright, if you have any questions, just ask. We should be able to leave the ship here as long as we want. No one supervises these landing pads anymore. You! You there! Ah, uh, shit. What's with you? Let that piece of junk sink its thrust into my landing pad! <laughs> that fucking accent. Uh, uh, Tridarians and their weird ass accents. Yeah, good job there, Barth. Good fucking job. You dumbass. Alright. Hmm. I could just insult him. 
Force Persuade. It's a Tridarian. I already know that's not going to work. Alright. I could just insult him. It's a landing pad. Ships land on it. No, really? Thanks for the insight. And here I was, thinking you were a smart human. I got another ship coming in, and unless you want that piece of junk's hull crushed flat, you better move it. Got it? What other ship? That's none of your business. All you need to know is that they're gonna be firing up their quad lasers if they find your ship squatting there when they arrive. Uh-huh. Well, I mean... You're lucky my ship's gracing here, trash heap. Huh? My trash heap? Hmm. Fine. Land there. My trash heap's all that's keeping your ship from making a final plunge. And trust me, it won't be long in coming, I promise you. I got some visitors booked for your space. But I'm sure the two of you can work it out when they arrive. So insulting worked? Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on. Is someone weed whacking outside? Are you for real? Are you for real? It's it's literally raining. What is wrong with you people? I don't know what's going on. Fuck it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not catching on the microphone too much anyway, so that's fine. All right. I apologize if it does start at any point. But... Nothing I have on. Nothing I can do about that, honestly. Unfortunately, nothing I can do. Uh, well, I do need to level up the handmaiden, so I might as well bring her. <laughs> do I take the hit on the XP bonuses with Kreia? Even though she could be invaluable. Uh. Her insight might be invaluable. A lot more useful. Oh, I need to get T3 leveled up too. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I can at least change it out whenever I want. There's that at least. Okay. Cool. All right. Quello. I guess that's the name of the dude. Okay. Anyway, time to do the leveling. Oh, she's at the same light level I am. Cool. Alright, um... <laughs> oh, she, she has so few points. Oh my god, she gets so few points. Oh my god. Okay. She... Wait, she's a soldier. Why do I have her in light armor if she can wear heavy? Why am I doing that? Why am I so dumb? Why am I so fucking stupid? Okay. Um... I guess I'll do that. I'm not even sure if that's a weed whacker. Is that a vacuum? I don't even know. I don't even know, and now I don't care. Um, conditioning? That would be good. Um, she's got improved power attack. That's something. Oh, for fuck's sake. Huh. <sighs> Seems everyone in the grandma decided they wanted to start using their heavy equipment today. <sighs> this is this is why I wanted to move out like months ago. Oh well. Anyway, sorry for the complaining. Mm -mm. I'm not sure what I want to do. I guess we'll go with another melee feat. Just so she has more variety in her attacks. That might be good. Sure. I mean, she has a lot more feats to learn, so why not? I am upping her intelligence because, my goodness, <laughs> there is no reason none to have that few points coming in. There is none. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, Master 2 fighting. Good. Could do that. Or. Or. She 
Uh, hmm. Hmm. So plus two vitality points for each level up. It's retroactive. <sighs> mm, I'm not sure. Finesse melee weapon. Oh! Add either their dexterity or strength bonus to their chance to hit, whichever is higher. And she does have a higher dexterity. So that would be useful. Oh, that's extremely useful. It's beyond useful. It's absolutely fantastic. So treat injury. Going to keep having to level that up for the time being. So that is added. So that's good. Um, something about... I don't want to add any of those. There's no need to. So I guess we'll do the Master 2 weapon fighting. So that's finished. And she has one more. <sighs> Boy. Woo! Got up to Unarmed Specialist 3. Fantastic. And with that in mind, we shall do Improved Flurry to add that. Fantastic. Now she has a wider variety. And we're golden. Beautiful. Alright, and now... <laughs> T3 is on the light side. How the hell can a droid go light side? I don't know. Hey, it works. It works. It's fine. Okay. Um... Hmm. No need to do Wisdom or Charisma. Dexterity would be good, though. Adds modifiers to blasters. And increases defense. Hmm. That's probably a good idea. Alright, so one, one, one... Up there, that's good. Or I could just go with demolitions and up that further. It's probably a good idea, actually. Mm, maybe not that good an idea. Let's go with awareness. Up it on that. Cool. All right. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Up on awareness a little further. There we go. Feats. Mm hmm. Let's go with toughness for now. And more skills. Okay, whoops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to get it almost finished. There we go. Then awareness will be almost as high as necessary. Okay, cool. And now we can switch them out. Now that I've gotten them all finished up with their leveling. And we're going to bring Kreia. Uh, hmm. Actually, you know what? No, we don't need Kreia anymore. Because her main benefit was the Force Link as well as the Experience Bonus. I don't need the Experience Bonus that badly. And quite frankly... I know of multiple other, well, mm. screw it, I'll bring her too, because there's multiple times that she will chime in in trying to lay the path forward for me in what she wants me to be doing as, you know, my teacher and whatnot. So we'll bring her along. But I'm not going to bring these guys yet. Just watching the arm turn on is funny. <laughs> it's just funny to me. Okay. All right. That's good enough. Let's get going then. All right. And we turn the corner, and oh, exchange thugs, that's not good. You wander too far, human. We warn you what happened, but your kind did not listen. 
break legs. Maybe you not wander so no. far. Look, you can't keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. Y you've got us locked in. Know your place, human. Your place is here. There, not here. Of a human, what you look at. Whoa, that's dark sidey. Um, that's also dark sidey. Um, at a couple of cowards without the stomach for a real fight. I don't know if that's dark sidey, but I mean, it would definitely get them off of his back for sure. Uh, what's going on here? Exchange business, human. Not for your seeing, unless you want to lose your eyes. Ah. Huh. We'll see who loses what. Alright. That's mildly dark sidey, but probably won't give me dark side points. But I won't let you hurt that man. Stand away from him. One human, not an amusing fight. More than one human, a little better. Spill more blood. Oh, well. Fight happens anyway. Oh well. Light side points gained for being a good guy. And they're good, and they got another level up for it. Cool. Ooh. <laughs> this guy had one credit to his name? <laughs> Alright, well. They leveled up. Might as well <laughs> them up further. <laughs> one credit. One singular credit to his, Miz to his name. Ichani Strike. What? What? That's a thing? Oh. When using unarmed attacks against any opponent, she deals an additional 2 to 8 damage and has a 15% chance of knocking down the opponent. Okay, what the fuck? Now I'm hearing weird noises outside my apartment. The flying fuck. So instead of the 1 to 4 damage and 10%, it's now 2 to 8 and 15. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I still haven't used the extra feet yet. What do I use it on is the question. Uh, she's fully kitted out and all of that, so there's no reason to worry about that. Um, hmm. Let's go with toughness. Yeah, there we go. Toughness. Better. And her dexterity is plus four, so if I'm going to get her in heavy armor anything, it knocks her down to plus three, but it's heavy. It is heavy. Yeah, it just knocks her down to plus three. But it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. Alright. Oh, these add plus two. That would explain why she was at plus four. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, look at her. That armor actually looks pretty good on her. Look at that. What is it? Uh, well, I forgot to level you up. That's what it is. Um, okay. Go with that. Go with that. And... Teach Grandma more computer use. There we go. Oh, she learned determination. Fantastic. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what point, what stuff to give her now. She's improved heal isn't for until 12? What? What? Oh, whatever. Uh, when the level up limit is higher for this game than the other one, I guess it makes sense that improved heal is at 12. Alrighty. I don't know what to give her. I guess we'll go with stun. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm so high up on the light side. Look at that. Uh, we're so pious. And then Kray is just like, Ugh. Okay, anyway. 
I don't know what's going on outside, and that noise is starting to get annoying, especially when I'm trying to record, so I'm just going to end the episode here for right now and figure out what's going on there because it's driving me up a wall. Luckily, it's not catching up, picking up too much on the microphone, but still. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment. <laughs> share and comment. I fucking fucked up my own outro. God damn it. <laughs> Doug, damn it, damn it, owner of the Dimsdale, damn it, damn it. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. Yeah, I nailed it. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat playing games and trying to get into Nar Shada and trying not to make a scene, but we're already failing on doing that. And yeah, I guess that's basically it. Just continuing on the way we have been. And we'll see how it goes in the future. It shouldn't be too bad, I think. Probably. For you.